All right, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another edition of The Roaring Lion Lives On, our black canvas grappling save here on TEW 2020. We are here for the second part of a two-part episode to finish out the Strength Rush Tour and pay-per-view, which will, of course, be headlined... That's the wrong. Will, of course, be headlined by Suki and Razan Okamoto for the World Championship Certified Banger. Uh, that one's going to be. And if you missed the last episode or um, you didn't make it all the way through, we reached 65 pop in Kansai. So I took a bullet, upgraded our broadcasting a little bit to get on Emperor's Choice, a proper pay-per-view provider, and hopefully we'll be able to see it mat you know, the broadcast revenue, the pay-per-view revenue, match a good amount of that income for us. And we also switched off of All Japan TV. Shogun, who was doing our events, is now going to be doing our tour highlights instead of All Japan TV. So... Yeah, and then the only other change I made was I gave Ant-Man and Monday Next Team a name, and they're called Ant Next. Is it just a um, amalgamation, a conglomeration, I don't know what the word is, of their two names? Yes. Do I care? No. <laughs> in my spreadsheet, anytime I book them in a match, this is just how I'd write it, and it's kind of grown on me. So Ant Next is an official team in BCG now, and... Other than that, um, yeah, let's just get into tour day number four and backstage incident, psychology to Koyo Kino Shita, uh, select a generic venue is fine, um, yeah, no, that will do Kyoto. Okay, so tonight we are opening the show, speaking of Ant Next, we're going to open with them. As Ant Next is going to team up with Tanyu Toshu Sai of the... That is what I forgot. I was going to show you... Sorry, let me get through this first match. Um, versus Sofu Ozawa and the Silent Killers. This is going to be our uh, technical masterclass. And uh, you know what? Ant-Man can pin Sofu. Ant-Man can pin Sofu. Technical Masterclass. Open script. Slow build decisive. That is correct. I forgot. Here is the newest stable in BCG formed at the previous pop-up pay-per-view. Um, BCG's Test Your Might. Uh, pause that if you want to read the bio I wrote out. But this is the newest uh, faction led by Guerrilla Warfare Funakoshi. Um, he's got his, his protege Tanyu. And the rest of the guys are, are people that he likes to team regularly with on um, tour shows and, and whatnot. So, yeah, so we open the show. K Silent Killers and Sofu versus Ant Next and Tanyu. We then have a our first of two Young Lion matches, which we'll see the first ever, you know, jungle prowlers, you would say, <laughs> as... Uh, Quick Kick Nakao and the Wild Ones will take on the Red Dragons and Iki Hosaka. Uh, this is going to go 10 minutes. Finley can get the victory because he's a fucking legend. Book the segment. And then we will have Massacre take on Nobuyuki Kubo in um, this match. In the other Young Lion match, give Massacre another win here. All right, book the segment. Up next, we have a quick old tag team match between the Dependables and Doi and Dynamite, Takanori Doi and Dynamite Narahashi. Uh, this is going to go 17 minutes, and in, so, in a surprising upset, we're going to have Shark pin the Doi boy. I'm going to protect Dynamite because I don't know how much that would hurt him. Uh, this is going to steal the show, open script, slow build, and after Shark gets the victory by pinning Doi, uh, Dynamite calls Shark a phony, essentially. He calls out Shark, he's like, you and your fucking ancient tag team partner haven't done jack shit, you know, you, yeah, you beat, you beat me tonight and all, but like, Shark, you can't do fucking anything without your grandpa or your father, whoever the fuck that is you tag with. 
prove me wrong and let's let's take this on at the pay-per-view me versus you so dynamite and shark a little uh a little angry there i don't know if shark can i doubt yori can do fucking much of anything uh so i got this going two minutes takanori doi can go on charisma yori is there existing <clears throat> my throat and my voice are going out on me during this recording already, so that's just beautiful to see. Um, but yeah, Dynamite Narahashi calls out Shark for the pay-per-view, and this match isn't... I don't know how good it's going to be, but I wanted to test out both Dynamite and Shark. Um, well, I know, how, I know how Dynamite is, but I wanted to test out Shark in a singles capacity on a pay-per-view, so Dynamite was probably the best option there. Um, up next, we have another tag match, as the politicians are going to take on next, Suguru Emoto and Ichiro Mitsukuri. This one's going 20 minutes. This one's going to be such a great match. Uh, Emoto can pin whoever the fuck. I'm just going to protect them both, because they're really going to bitch, and I, I don't care. Um, it's a tour show, guys. Uh, so yes, yeah, Suguri Moto is going to pick up the victory here, and um, another quick two-minute angle, Emoto promises to make the whole Showtime unit pay. So at the pay-per-view, Emoto lost a singles match to Mabuchi Furusawa, and he said, I'm going to get my rematch, and Furusawa really just kind of shushed him off as he was writhing in pain after his ribs were broken, but... um. In all seriousness, yeah, he blew him off, and Emoto here, he is not too fucking happy. He promises that he will take the fight straight to Showtime, and he won't give in until Furusawa gives him a rematch of any kind, with or without the next. Emoto wants his hands on Furusawa again. Um, Suguru... Oh. Yep, that's <laughs> what so we're gonna... We're, you know what, fuck it. Entertainment, just script him. The worst that, you know, it's an angle. It's okay. It'll be fine. Um, all right. And then our main event tonight is going to be a fun team up as we see Washi and Intensity take on the American Cobras and Yoshi Nakataku. Um, 24 minutes. Yoshi Nakataku can get the pinfall victory over. We'll do Washi. Open script, slow build, do not overbook, please. Decisive. And then we end the show with Finley has earned a... Is, can he speak? Um, sorry. He might be able to speak Japanese now. I'm not going to be... I'm not going to lie. I think it's been long enough. He speaks fluent Japanese. We're going to test a Finley promo, guys. Uh, earned a... This is going to be the first time he speaks Japanese in the whole save. So, this is just going to shock the crowds. Um, but yeah, so at the Lion's Roar, no, at the Lion Rises, 20, at the Lion Rises 9, that's right, because we number them. Nope, it was the Lion's Roar, fuck. At the Lion's Roar number 9, um, Finley defeated Giant Brody in a singles match, and now... Finley has just defeated... Finley and his tag partner have defeated the Dojo Guards. So, Finley has taken out every single man of the Dojo. Except Yoshinakataku, and he has earned himself a Challenger Series title match. And we will see that match happen at the pay-per-view. As Finley challenges Taku. And that match is good to go. We're gonna... Uh, we're, no, we're gonna script it. We're gonna script it. Four minutes. Major success, regular success. But yeah... At the pay-per-view, we will see for the Challenger Series Championship, Big Bruiser Finley and Yoshi Nakatake. This match is going to do really fucking well, and I'm excited for it. Um, but yeah, that's that's all for tonight's show. We should have 108 minutes. That is correct, and let's get into it. 61 for the Technical Masterclass. Sofu is always the weak link. That's what you expect at this point in time from him. Uh, 57 for the first Young Lion match with Finley trying way too hard again. And a 43 for the other one. 52 for the Dependables versus the Doi Boys. And, um, yeah, Doi slowly, slowly getting better. Slowly getting better. 
But, um, yeah, the promo gets a 47. Cool. 52 for the next versus the politicians. And a 47 for their promo. And a 71 for the main event. Cool. Storm of Spillane also trying way too hard, buddy. You don't need to work that hard. And, yeah, 67. Finley speaks Japanese. Shocks the fucking fans. And, boom, 67 for our first tour show. Uh, good stuff, good stuff. Um, yeah, if nothing goes on in between the two shows, we will get straight into day number five. Alright, day five, nothing happened in between. Microphone work for Genji, microphone... But no, that's a psychology. I didn't read it, if I'm gonna be honest. Uh, it was probably psychology. Dude, it went up by five points, holy fuck. Oh my god, alright, beautiful. Um, let's go with Osaka this time. All right. Up next, opening this show is another fun team up that we aren't going to see very much, but Ant next are going to get another victory to open the show as they team up with Suki to take on the Spinebreakers and Yori Ibutsai as, um, all perceptions, sorry. Uh, Yori and the Spinebreakers, okay, alright, and this is gonna go 15 minutes, um, we'll have Suki get the win, Technical Masterclass, Yori can take the fall, Open Script, Slow Build Decisive, <clears throat> first Young Lion match we have is going to be Iki, Kubo, and Genji, versus... Intensity and Massacre. Alright, Massacre. This is going 10. It always goes 10. I don't know why I paused there. I'll give Masashi the pin victory. He doesn't usually get many of those. And next Young Lion match. Just kidding. We're not doing a Young Lion match because the next are here. The next jump... The Showtime Stable, they jump Masashi, they jump Yoshisada, they jump Massacre, Suguru, Ichiro, and Koyo. Versus, and Mabuchi Furusawa's here. So, after the match, Emoto said he was going to make Showtime pay, and he's enacting on that just then. And eventually, so they jump, they jump the Showtime guys, they lay him out, and they lay him out, and Suguru's like, Come on, stop it, Furusawa. Come on. He's like egging him on. Furusawa still doesn't come out. He's trying not to do much. He's traveling along with us. He's backstage. He's hanging out with the boys and all. But um, he doesn't want to get involved because of his ribs. So, Amoto says, Fine, you don't want to come out here? We're going to have to take... We're, we're going to have to do whatever it takes. And they all three get chairs, and they all put him around... Massacre, Masashi, and Yoshisada's legs. They climb to the second rope, and Emoto yells one more time, this is your last chance, Furusawa. And finally, Furusawa comes out. He's like, fine, fine. You want a rematch? Fine. But you gotta come, you gotta meet me halfway. You fucking broke my ribs. I can't do it alone. We gotta do a 3v3. And Emoto says, yes, yes. And, and then Furusawa also says, I gotta redeem myself. When I face Suki, I need to redeem myself with wagers, Emoto. So the only way I give you this rematch is if we put some shit on the line. We have a wager. And Emoto says, I don't give a fuck. I'll do whatever. And, um, yes, the two agree to a 3v3 at the pay-per-view. It will be the next versus Furusawa, Washi, Tanaka, and Massacre. And yeah, success, 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 and the major success for those three as they get what they want. But, ooh, Emoto gets what he wants, dot, 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 at a price. But what will he have to wager? He was so focused on whether or not he could get a rematch, he doesn't stop to think what it's going to cost him. Um, but on the next show, we will determine what that wager is, as for now, the next the next get their little victory. Um, up next, we're going to have the other Young Lion match. Yutaka Ogata versus Noritoshi Mura. 
10 minutes. Mira gets the victory. Good to see. And up next, we do have the next. They are in a match. If I'm booking them for an angle, I'm booking them in a match. That's how I roll. It will be Sofu and the Silent Killers versus Raw Power and Siguru. Uh, match is going to go 15 minutes total. Um, Amoto can get his victory. Sofu takes the pin. I'm going to protect Kondamaro and Kiyotaka because they are going to be in that tag match. Um, steal the show. Book it. All right, cool. Up next is going to be a weird fucking tag match as it's going to be Shark, Nakao, and Tanyu versus the American Cobras and Dynamite Narahashi. Weird fucking team up, but it kind of makes sense as the Cobras are teaming up because they almost had to face... Um, Nikau and Tanyu, so this is going to be kind of like a should we add Tanyu and Nikau, how will they do against the tag champs and the Cobras are like, they want to, you know, keep that fucking pushed away, like, let's not, let's not humor that, I'll beat them tonight, and then of course Dynamite and Shark are facing at the pay-per-view, um, but yes, 20 minutes total and Dynamite will end up pinning Shark to win the match, slow build, decisive, Book that. And then our main event tonight is going to be a real fun fucking team up. As um, Blast Radius is going to team up with Enajero. So that's already going to be a fun team up. And then they're going to team up with against Big Bruiser Finley, Funakoshi, and Razan Okamoto. Can Funakoshi and Razan put their pass behind them? Well, they can, because the story of the match is that Funakoshi and Razan, they fucking hate each other, but they're goddamn professionals. If they have a common enemy, and in this case, a member of the dojo and two members of M3, then they will do whatever it takes to get that job done, and it's going to be Funakoshi pinning in a Jero to win the match. Open script, slow build, decisive. That is our main event, and after the match... Funakoshi lets Enajiro know the war isn't over. And Funakoshi um, will put Big Bruiser Finley on here. We'll put Enajiro on here. And I'll put Taku off screen. Um, we'll, do a, we'll do a menace angle. So essentially Funakoshi is like, hey, let your boy know that just because Finley's got a title match against him... We're not done, as it's going to be me, Harker, and Tanyu versus you, um, Brody, and your boy Mura at the pay-per-view. Boom. Major success for those two. And that, of course, like I said, I don't think I pre-booked the first 3v3. So, first 3v3, of course, is going to be the next Raw Power and Suguru Emoto. Versus Massacre, Washi Tanaka, and Mabuchi Furusawa. So, all right. So just just to pull back the curtain for a quick second there, that was the planned match the whole time. But having um, Furusawa's ribs get shoot broken actually helped the storyline out a lot more because I didn't realize it didn't entirely make sense. Like, why is Emoto gonna fucking? do quote-unquote whatever it takes to get a rematch against Furusawa and then be okay with a trios match. And now that Furusawa's shoot got injured, it makes a lot more sense. So thank you, I guess, for breaking my ribs game. Um, and then the other match we're pre-booking is the Dojo Guards and Giant Brody versus the Jungle Prowler's pay-per-view debut. Animal Harker, Tanya Toshusai, and the homeboy Funakoshi. Pre-book. And then we do have another match to pre-book tonight. I Something went long. No, I just, I had that go. Never mind. Um, as we have a post-show press conference, Maeda wishes these teams 
could have been oh shoot sorry been in the four way so Maeda he holds during the press conference he says um pretty much I've been impressed with the spine breakers as of late ever since they've aligned themselves with Razan Okamoto I've been impressed with them but so, two guys that I've been really impressed with during this tour has been Ant-Man and Monday Next and I feel ashamed that I didn't even give them a chance. I couldn't give the Spinebreakers a chance to qualify for the four-way because they were teaming with Razan. But I feel ashamed that I didn't even give the team of Ant-Man and Monday Next a chance to challenge for those tag titles at Strength Rush. So, to make up for that blunder, opening the show, opening the pay-per-view, we will have Ant-Man and Monday Next take on the Spinebreakers, where the winning team will be the next challengers for whoever the tag champions may be. So, quick post-match angle there. So, Juro Sen, Nobu Yuharu, Ant-Man, Monday Next, all getting a number one contenders match at the pay-per-view. Uh, book the segment, pre-booking... Spinebreakers and Ant next. Boom. And yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have one more match that's going to get pre booked on the next show. But as for this one, let's get into it. 61 to open the show. Suki with a fucking. Everybody else is just like coasting. And then Suki's like fucking pulling out destroyers and, and, and fucking brain busters and shit. So thank you, Suki. Uh, 54 for the first Young Lion match, and then the subsequent angle gets a 71 because Furusawa fucks hard. Uh, 46 for the other Young Lion match. A 57 for Sofu and the Killers versus the next. Koyo got a 62. Koyo's slowly becoming one of the, one of the better men uh, in the undercard thanks to Maeda. So, you know... Uh, 66 for Shark, Nakao, and Tani versus Dynamite and the Cobras. Uh, no one really, you know, had an incredible performance tonight. Um, and then our main event gets a 79 because it's three of our best in-ring workers teaming up. Um, yeah, beautiful. And the 3v3 announcement angle got a 71. And the post-show press conference got a 71. So good angles all around tonight. And resulting in a really good show. So I am very happy with how that turned out as we go into our final tour show before this year's Strength Rush. All right, it is our final tour show of the, of the, of the episode as it's the final show before Strength Rush 2020. And the only thing that we know that's going to happen is at the press conference following tonight's show, we will determine the wager for the Showtime versus next match at the pay-per-view. But we got a whole show to go through. And we open tonight's show with a 4v4 as Ant Next and Intensity team up to face the Silent Killers and the Spinebreakers. And I have these Silent Killers and Spinebreakers going over. I think... I, I realized that, like, they, I kind of been jobbing these two teams out, and I didn't want to do that. So, we're giving them the win to open the show. A nice little preview match for that massive tag match and the number one contenders match we have at the pay-per-view. Um, the first of our two Young Lion matches, we've got the Politicians taking on the Red Dragons. Going 10 minutes. Uh, Roku can go over... All right, and then we have a, another Young Lion match, and Doi will not be teaming up with his usual boy, Dynamite Narahashi, but he will be teaming up with um, Quick Kick Nakao to take on, I believe it is Iki and Kubo. It is Iki and Kubo. Another 10-minute match, and the Doi boy can go over. Um, but unfortunately for the Doi boy, he is jumped by Joshua Taylor, who makes his return to BCG. He wasn't on the last show, and he says, um, he, 
he's come back to BCG because he's heard this 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 uproar about this oh this new guy this new young lion Takanori Doi this guy just graduated he's fucking great. I'm really getting the spotlight taken away from me for this fucking guy at the pay per view. I've got a match against you, Doi, and I'm gonna show the world just how much of an embarrassment you truly are. And the Doi boy gets shot up by the JT himself. Um, four minutes. JT is jealous of the Doi boy challenges him for the pay-per-view um yeah major success because doi's on another pay-per-view that's a major success for him uh we then have a quick 3v3 17 minute match um the next versus what do i got i got dynamite narahashi massacre and washi tanaka this one's going to go uh, 18 minutes. Yeah, 18 minutes. Or no, I have it go, I have it go to 17. Sorry, 17 minutes. Um, Washi can get the victory. He can pin Seguru. Steal the show. Open script. Not a slow build, just decisive. And then after the match, Furusawa makes an appearance just to, just to fuck with him. Taunts Emoto, and it makes him fuming. It turns Seguri Emoto fucking bright red with anger. <clears throat> Massacre in Washi. So essentially, he comes out. He's like, I don't know. You couldn't even beat my underlings, and you think you're gonna beat me? Oh man, I God, I hate to see how embarrassed you're gonna look at tonight's wager press conference. And Emoto is just fucking fuming. And there is a reason for this. It's not entirely just so I can cheese some more pop onto these three guys from a Furusawa promo. That is, of course, a lot of the a lot of the reason I did it. But there is gonna be another reason that um, Showtime comes out just to fucking do nothing with him. Um, our semi main will be a two v two. Between the Jungle Prowlers, Animal Harker, and Tani Toshusai as they take on the Dojos, Yoshi Nakataku, and Giant Brody. Match is going to go 20 minutes. And Taku is going to go over. He can pin Brody's tag team partner. Script it, slow build it, decisive it. And then our main event is indeed if i'm gonna pay a hundred uh, eight hundred whatever dollars for joshua taylor i'm gonna use motherfucking joshua taylor as he's gonna team up with the american cobras to take on m3 and this match is gonna go 24 minutes and the cobras will go over jt and the cobras will go over they can pin rokumon open script slow build i'm gonna protect all of m3 it is not worth having them lose pop to Joshua Taylor at this point in the save. Um, so yeah, what do we what do we referee to Waya? Yeah, okay, buddy. Just don't fucking put yourself in that match. Alright. So after the show goes off the air, the press conference goes on. <clears throat> Wagers are set for showtime versus next. The next. Alright. Let me get everybody in the angle, and I will, I will explain what goes on here. Seguru, so Ichiro, and Koyo. So essentially, the way we have this is they're all at the table. Maeda's in the middle. Showtime's on one end. The next are on the other. And first, Aoi comes out and he says, "Amoto, I know I, I'm gonna apologize in advance, but I did not ask for your input on these wagers." As um. Truthfully speaking, I do hold all the cards, and while you were about to injure my guys, if I really need be, I could step. I could. I could step in, put the foot down, physically get involved. I just really didn't want to, so I gave in to you. So I feel like it's only fair that you give in to me and accept this wager. Read it over, do whatever you want. And Amoto is just so fucking pissed already from the first loss, from the the um patronizing after his loss at, at the first pay-per-view, the patronizing after his loss tonight, Amoto is pissed, and he says, I don't give a 
fuck whatever you have planned. We're doing this match. And he quickly signs it. And Furusawa, he just starts fucking dying laughing. He's like, you gotta be fucking... This was so much easier than I thought. You are like a children's book. You're like the book I read to my daughter at fucking bedtime because you're the easiest shit to read, buddy. I knew all I had to do was come out and just poke the bear a little bit and the bear would give me exactly what I want. You're like a bear that lays golden eggs. I didn't know you existed, but you do. A wrestler this dumb exists. And um, what you just signed there, Suguru Emoto... It's not exactly what I wanted, because if, if I got exactly what I wanted, my Ada would never greenlight it, but my Ada did greenlight this. Whoever loses that 3v3 match at the pay-per-view, whichever faction goes under, goes under permanently. The losing faction, effective immediately, will be absorbed into the winning faction. So, Omoto, you might get more than what you want. You might have me under your thumb. But the truth is, Emoto, I think I've just acquired three more fucking bodies. Bombshell announcement happening on the pay-per-view. Minor success, major success for these three. Regular success for those three. So whoever wins this 3v3 match at the pay-per-view, effective immediately, will be joining the other faction. Um, so yeah, we could see Furusawa join the next and be under the thumb of Suguru Emoto, or we could see the next be absorbed into Showtime and maybe be more successful. Who knows? Start the show. Opening match gets a 61. Good to see. Um, Urugataya got a good performance. Good performance from Urugataya. 45 for the first Young Lion match and a 46 for the second one. Doi slowly getting better. Slowly getting better. And the uh, promo by the Doi Boy and JT gets a good old 50. Oh, that that's right. We got to pre-book that. I'm pretty sure. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, this is the last match for the pay-per-view. Takanori Doi versus Joshua Taylor. Um, good to see. 50 rating. And then a 62 for the next versus Showtime and Dynamite. Um, Washi got a 64. Good old, good old Washi getting the number. And then an 81 because Furusawa was a genius. And um, yeah, 71 for Hark and Tanyu versus the Dojo. Good fucking... Harker was the weak link and he, he wasn't even that bad. And then the main event gets a 68. Uh, we're obviously not expecting too much from Joshua Taylor in this save, but um, you never know. Maybe he'll reverse time decline. I don't think we ever actually checked if he's declining physical ability. I know he'd be holding back tonight. He is declining physical ability. We don't know how far along that is, but it's far enough along to where he's not getting the main event ratings he should. And then the 65 for the post-show press conference. And we get a 68 on the final tour show. Going in to Strength Rush 2020. And yeah. That's going to do it. I think I think we're good. Again, if nothing happens, let's get straight into that pay-per-view. Alright, moment of truth time for um, a couple of reasons. Mainly... Is, um, is this going to turn out to be a good idea? I can't imagine it's not. In the short term, it might not because it looks like we're losing money if we don't run a pay-per-view every week. But I think overall it'll even out. And in a few months, like the long term, who knows the benefits of the long term? Because I don't. But we are here for Strength Rush 2020. I actually think this turned out to be a pretty stacked card. When it was all said and done, we got a couple of matches that are going to be like, like, obviously, you know, it's like, okay, how good can Ant-Man versus the Spinebreakers and Taylor versus Doi really be? But like, um, losing faction gets absorbed match <laughs> as Showtime takes on the next, um, the Cobras are in a clusterfuck match, but that might turn out really good, um, 
any match from Nakoshi's is going to be really good, but the I'm talking about the the two singles matches for the titles we have. Suki and Raza Okamoto has a chance to be the best match in the company's history, probably all time, but for this save for sure, it's got it. It's got a claim. I'm going to move my mic so there might be a loud noise. Sorry. It's got a loud fucking claim to be better than an 86. And um, Finley and Taku can also be a generationally great match. But we won't know until we run the show. So first things first, obviously you need to... What are we looking at? $40,000? Probably going to be worth it. Fuck, man. Ugh, all right, but opening the show number one contenders match. I didn't specify what show this pre-booking is going to be for because I'm not a hundred percent sure if we're going to do it at the next pay-per-view or pop-up pay-per-view, but whoever wins this match gets a guaranteed. They are the next challengers for the tag titles no matter who holds them. And it's going to be the Spinebreakers this time as Sojuro Sen's going to pin Monday next. Technical Masterclass open. Ah, God, can they call it? I actually don't mess with these teams enough. So Juro Sen cannot call it. Poor guy. That sounds like that Nobuharu's getting the pinfall victory, actually, bud. Um, all right. Uh, open script, slow build, decisive. Spinebreakers do go over. Monday next was unhappy at the looking of the match. And then Sojuro Sen started fucking cracking his knuckles. Good to see. Up next is the Doi Boys' first ever pay-per-view match. Um, in TEW, you know, technically not. Because Papa pay-per-views aren't exactly any different in the grand scheme of things. When you break down the stats. But for our purposes this is the doy boy's first ever pay-per-view match and he will be coming up short i i don't hate joshua taylor i feel like i give off the impression like oh this guy's a waste of money and i and i'm you know i'm just disappointed more than anything i really had a really good idea to do bullet club in bcg and it, it would have revolved around joshua taylor um it would have been so cool it been jt Ant-Man and Monday next, the Cobras, it would have been so fucking nice, man. Um, but fingers crossed that we can snag Casey Glenn whenever his contract comes up. Um, but Joshua Taylor will take the fall, steal the show. No, he will get the victory, sorry. Uh, open script, decisive, book the segment. Up next, we have Dynamite Narahashi versus Shark Okimasa. And despite a valiant effort from Shark here, Dynamite Narahashi is going to come out with the victory. And we're going to call it? We're not going to call it. Shark ain't quite there yet. Script, slow build, decisive. Did I slow? I feel like I slow built the last match by mistake. I did not. Okay, cool. All right, up next, big ol' 3v3. Losing faction gets absorbed into the other one. This is going 23 minutes. And in the end, it's not going to be much of a surprise as I'm not having Furusawa go under Seguro Emoto. That would be a fun. Don't get me wrong. That would be a fun thing to try to book around. And, you know, but that being said, this is the right call. Furusawa pins Seguro Emoto, and the next are officially absorbed, and all three members, Emoto, Ichiro, and Koyo, are officially a part of Showtime. Open, script, slow build, decisive, and then we're gonna have a quick post-match where faction warfare post-match, that's what I'll call it. Uh, I gotta go in six minutes. Mabuchi Furusawa Massacre Massacre Washi Tanaka Seguro Emoto Koyo Ichiro Entertainment Major Success Minor Success And then Regular Success Alright Tag Title Match Silent Killers Intensity Blast Radius And the Cobras 
goes 26 minutes. And in first to a fall rules, it's going to be Storm Spillane who pins. We'll do, we'll do Kiyotaka to retain the titles. This will be a really fun match. Um, 4v, not 4v, 4 2v, 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 2. The Cobras will retain, however. And yeah, 26 minutes. Up next, Challenger Series Championship, Yoshi Nakataku versus Big Bruiser Finley. Match is going to go 22 minutes. It's going to be a fucking banger. And Yoshi Nakataku is going to retain, which, which still, as good as this match is going to be, we might run it back in the future. But it is too early in Yoshi Nakataku's title reign to truly think about taking the belt off of him yet. And yeah, Finley's going to, he's going to do the job for him. Semi-main, the pay-per-view debut of the Jungle Prowlers taking on the dojo match is going to go 24 minutes. And Gorilla Warfare Funakoshi is going to get the victory. And he will once again pin Giant Brody in the match. I don't know. I know Tanyu can call. I don't know if Hart can call. Hart can call. This is a this is a call and match. Uh, slow build, decisive, and book the segment. And then in our main event, as fun as it would be to see Suki as the champion... Uh, it is also, once again, same case with Yoshi Nakataku. It is too early in Razan Okamoto's title reign to consider taking the title off of him quite just yet. But this match, I am so confident, will be one of the greatest matches we have ever produced, assuming they don't have poor chemistry. Um, Mabuchi for so yeah, I have broken ribs, I'm aware. Uh, who is who is refing too much? Taiwara? Um, that's Gonruko. There you are. Gonruko is good. Yep, Gonruko is good. All right, and then we we are we do have time for it, so we'll just do a uh, Suki versus Razan post match angle. Five six Suki Razan Razan on charisma. Suki on entertainment. And, alright, pay-per-view time. I got my notepad ready. I won't forget this time. I don't think I fucked it up last time, but I didn't get to write down everyone that had a good performance. So, let's get it on. Ant next in the Spinebreakers. It's a decent enough match. It's a decent enough match. Yeah, I, I was kind of hoping for a little better, but you know what? Good enough. Good enough. Good job. 54 to open the show. And then a 56 for the Doy Boy and JT. Doy Boy got a 40. Slowly but surely, he's he's getting better performances, guys. He's getting better performances. Uh, JT taps him out in 1244 with the Butterfly Lock. 61 for Shark and Dynamite. This actually kind of overachieved. I was expecting another 50 uh, between these two, but... Dynamite and Shark were able to get me a 61. 66 for Usawa. Um, got a 61 with fucking broken ribs. Um, but yeah, in the end, Furusawa made a moto tap out with the Furusawa armbar. And after the match, the next are no more. The stable's been dissolved and the members have been absorbed into showtime and Furusawa says Seguro you fucked and found out you fucked around and found out now you three are under me and you're gonna learn how to wrestle properly how to hold yourself how to carry yourself properly and most importantly you three are gonna learn how to win Koyo Ichiro I respect you two. You two are some of the last graduates to ever come out of the Golden Canvas Dojo. And the only reason I wanted the next in my group is you two. Amoto, you are a cocky, useless, horrible wrestler, and you are nothing but dead weight. You are out of showtime. I don't want you fucking anywhere 
near my group. You and your pathetic losing genes are fucking done. Get out of here. So, for those of you keeping track... And I'm, I'm sure nobody is, but for anybody that's keeping timelines of these stables, on the off chance somebody is, Seguro Rimoto was in the stable for all of six minutes before getting banished by Furusawa. Furusawa, he likes Koyo, he likes Ichiro, he creams over guys that were from Golden Canvas Grappling, but he wants absolutely nothing to do with Seguro Rimoto. I hit the wrong button, but... You know what, while I'm here, I'm just gonna, we're just gonna make an active and add Koyo and Ichiro, and they're gonna be muscle for Showtime. Yep. Uh, Washi's gonna be the deputy. My bad, hold up, sorry. Washi was supposed to be the deputy. Alright, and this is what Showtime's looking like right now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Good shit. All right, up next, the four-way tag team title match. Storm Spillane got a 71. Best performance of the show so far. Uh, Nobody had a bad performance. Um, Intensity actually really overperformed what I was expecting. So good for them. But, yeah, still the best team in the company are the American Cobras with a 72 overall rating for this match. Yoshi Nakataku versus Big Bruiser Finley gets an 80. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Even with Taku off his game, 80 rated match for Big Bruiser Finley versus Yoshi Nakataku. He has off nights. This shit happens. You don't love to see it, but this shit happens. And it still gets an 80. So probably am going to be running this match back at some point in time. But I don't know when and I don't know how and I don't even know if. But I really want to see how this will do when Taku's not off his game. Um, Jungle Prowlers versus the Dojo gets a good old 82. Giant Brody getting a 71. His match was better, so Brody does get the edge over Storm Spillane as of right now. And nobody else got 70s, but Funakoshi, of course, gets an 86. So Funakoshi... Now leading with performance of the night with an 86. Um, just head and shoulders above everyone else. That's what you're expecting from Funakoshi. He is he is that guy. He's just that good. Um, Jungle Prowlers go over in 23-37. Good match. And then our main event, World Championship 90 fucking 2. Oh my god. Holy shit. Okay. Oh boy. Okay. All right. Um wow. Um All right. I really wasn't expecting a 90. I I was right when I said this is going to be probably the greatest match in company history. I meant like an 88 or something. <laughs> awesome so we now know the meta is not to run storylines um yeah um razan no suki sorry suki san suki got in i'm like like shivering with like holy fuck oh my god Uh, Razan got an 86. He's gonna get the edge over Funakoshi this time. Um, sorry, let me... I'm gonna take a drink of water. Hold on. Um, okay. Wow. Whew, okay. And, and, oh my god. Dude, Emperor's Choice is, like, watching this match. Like, holy fuck. Fuck, we fleeced this company. What the fuck they give us for late night? Um, okay. Yeah, 92 for that match. And then the following promo. So, it's essentially Suki's just like, Razan, you know what? Have your have your title reign. Because eventually I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back better than ever. I'll come back. Blast will come with me. Rokuma will come with me. We'll all come back meaner, stronger, 
and better than ever. And Razan just says, whatever. Do whatever you want. Bring the fucking roster with you. Because you ain't beating me. Oh, and before I forget, good match out there. And he, he offers a handshake because Razan, Razan truly is a, a, a sportsman. He, he, he prides himself on his sportsmanship. So even if he's going to come off like a cunt, he's going to offer his handshake. And of course, Suki doesn't shake it. He walks off in, in anger as we finish the show and we get an 87. I'm going to, yeah, Razan, buddy. Razan, hey. Um, remember when, remember when my Tyler tried to tell me that you weren't better than Funakoshi? Me too. Um, Funakoshi, remember when I hugged you? <laughs> um, Suki, remember when I kissed you? <laughs> um, yeah, holy fuck, dude. Jesus Christ. I am, um, well, I can't wait for the next pay-per-view. <laughs> um, I'm genuinely at a loss for words. I don't know what to say after that. Here's, I guess, here's the ratings. Here's the top ratings from everyone. Um, good to see. Uh, we struck gold. No shit. Oh my god, WLW. Don't fucking do that, buddy. Don't offer my guy a contract like that. You're not... Okay, it's just a handshake deal. I was gonna say, you're not trying to fuck on me, are you? Um, yeah, we, um, oh yeah, we're, um, we're gonna, we're gonna be fine. We got a bunch of paper. A million! A million! Okay, yeah, so, yeah, no, so, um, this is going great. Uh, we're thriving, boys. Um. Yeah. So. I I mentioned this in the five SSW save, but there is a there's a good amount of people um in the community that that use YouTube channels and diaries. They'll use saves as like guidelines. For like, oh, this, you know, you, you know, people, some people learn a lot just on the basics of how to play a game, or some people are, watch, uh, um, certain saves to like, oh, what's the right way to go about booking this company off screen? I, I don't want to worry about the, the off storyline meta. I just want to focus on my booking. Um, guys, that's the fucking meta, it looks like. The second you can get to, um, 65 in Kansai just fucking up the production it's worth it um we gained oh my god we gained three pop in one fucking show um what else I'm sorry what around the world did we we went from 25 to 27, 26 to 28, 36 to 39, 36 to 39, 32 to 34, 36 to... Oh my fucking lord. Um... Um... Yeah, so that's gonna do it for this episode. I'm at an even bigger loss for words. I guess we'll see um, how well this does following the end of the month. Because we, we do get that... Um, we have been getting that 64 has been making too much money tax recently. So we'll see how much that takes away. But even still, I, I as long as we're above 300k, I, at the end of the day, won't care too much. Um, yeah, so the next tour is going to be BCG Generations, and um, I'm going to come back with you guys for a single elimination tournament. As um, I'm going to keep it Generations, but... We have three Grand Prix. Um, Soul Survivor, we have the Maeda Grand Prix, and we have the Tagmania Grand Prix. So to end the year out 
We're going to do a single elimination tournament. I don't know how I want to format it schedule-wise yet, but first off, Test Your Might is dormant now. Um, but yes, that will be happening at the Generations Tour. I, I would like to make it, I think it would be fun just to make a fucking massive tournament. Like, 32 people would be fun. We have the people. I could bring in um, people from around the world to be in this single elimination tournament. It would be easier to do that than have them in the Grand Prix. So... If there's anybody that you would like me to bring in, this guy would be a, a good piece to bring in for this if I can. No, I can't. Um, so anybody that made it this far in the video, drop me some names in the comments um, of guys you would like me to bring in for this, um, this uh, tournament to end the year. I don't know what I'm going to call it yet. I'm thinking just about calling it like the Black Canvas Cup. And, um, yeah, so if I don't bring in the guy that you suggest, truthfully, it won't be because I didn't want to. I, I will try, I will try to bring in all the people you guys suggest as long as you don't give me a bunch of fucking names. Um, if I don't bring in somebody, it will most likely be because they're either signed, like, uh, Mr... I just saw him. I just saw him. Akima Brave here. Akima Brave is signed to TCW. I can't bring him in if I wanted to. Or it will break one of my owner goals because I already know you guys are going to want me to bring in Yuta Asono. Trust me, I want to too. I can't. <laughs> so, um, yeah, just, just list who you guys would like me to bring in for the Black Canvas Cup. And I will try to bring them in. So, if you all enjoyed Razan vs. Suki, I'm not surprised. And if that means you're going to keep tuning in because you're one of the, like, 300,000 new fans I just got in the Kansai region, I will see you for the Black Canvas Cup.